In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to find the best, most profitable, and most perfect target market and customers for your business. Just by using a simple market research framework made up of five easy to answer questions. If you've ever wondered who the best customers are, where to find them, not to mention how to put together a winning marketing strategy that has them doing everything they can to throw their money at you, then you're in the right place. So don't go anywhere, because while I appreciate words like market research and target market and things like that may not sound like that much fun, the money they can make you definitely is. And in today's hyper-competitive business world, it's the business who understands their customer best that wins. Making market research and finding new and innovative ways to get in front of your top potential customers one of the most important and profitable activities you can do. And this is why we're gonna take things further today than we've ever gone before, by not just working out the stereotypical superficial target market details of demographics like age, gender, income, and occupation, or geographic details like what city, state, province, or country they live in. No, not today, my friend, because today we're deep diving into the psychographics and identifying the functional, social, and emotional reasons that make customers buy. So you can get more of the good ones, nope, the best ones, and less of the whining, tire-kicking, penny-pinching, pain-in-the-neck ones that make your life miserable. We'll let your competitors have all those people. Sorry. And the first thing you need to do is understand the few key things that all of the best customers have in common, regardless of what business, market, or industry you're in. Starting with the fact that the best customers all have a problem. Your business exists as a solution provider to the problems that your customers have. The bigger the problem they have, the more money you'll be able to make. The more people that have this problem, the greater your potential customer pool, and the more money you'll be able to make. But be careful here not to commit the cardinal sin in marketing, which is believing that your business can target and serve everyone, as this sets you down the path of becoming a bland, boring, watered-down version of who you were truly meant to be. But we'll talk more about how to avoid that shortly in the video. For now, we need to expand on our best customer criteria by adding that the best customers all have a problem that you are uniquely positioned to solve. What makes you uniquely positioned to solve this problem for someone could be due to your experience or knowledge or interests or straight up passion for these kinds of people or problems. But one thing is for sure, the way you go about solving your customer's problem is going to give you a unique and differentiated competitive advantage. The best customers are almost always going to be the ones who will get the absolute most benefit from what it is you have to offer and will appreciate the path or style or unique combination of elements or ingredients that you use to help them achieve their goals. Okay, just one more thing to add here to our best customer criteria, which is that the best customers all have a problem that you are uniquely positioned to solve and are willing and able to take action to solve it. For your business to be sustainable and profitable, you need to make sure that the people that you're selling to and trying to serve are both willing and able to take action in order to solve this problem which in business means that they're willing and able to purchase whatever product or service that you're selling and offering to them in order to help them solve that problem. This one's important because selling to the right people, as obvious as this is going to sound, is the thing that's going to enable you to stay in business and actually make money. So now that we've got that covered, we've got a bit of sciencing to do. I'm pretty sure that's a real word. Now, if you've been in business for any length of time and have a few sales under your belt, then your job is gonna be a whole lot easier as all this involves is looking over your previous customers and ranking them in order from most profitable down to least profitable. You can do this manually if you're a sucker for punishment, but most sales and CRM systems should allow you to create a chart or a spreadsheet instantly with the click of a button. A quick side note here, this video is not sponsored, but personally, I use High Level to do this, so I'll put a link and a QR code up here on the screen as well as down in the descriptions below this video this is going to get you access to an extended free trial, a free course, and a free strategy call with the high level team to get it set up for your unique business if you want to check it out. After that, take a look at the top 20% of customers and write down any similarities or traits or characteristics that all of the best ones seem to have in common. This could be their age, their gender, their location, pretty much anything you can find. Now, if you don't have any of this information because you're just getting started in business or even if you're a seasoned pro but you're launching something new, in either case, you, my friend, are going to need to make an educated guess about who your very best customers could be. Don't worry, this guess doesn't have to be perfect, but it is helpful to have a jumping off point. So write down a rough age and maybe gender 
location, possible lifestyle, attitude, or interests that they might have. We're after an audience that's sufficiently wide to be useful, but you've got to avoid going so big that the distinct needs of this audience begin to become a diverse melting pot. It's all about balance, my friend. Now, important note here. When you're putting these things together, you're probably gonna come across a situation that looks a little like this. But my business can help both men and women. Or, but my business serves both younger and older people. Or, but my business is for both cats and dogs. Well, here's the good news. You are allowed to have and go after multiple different target markets or different types of customers. But if you do this, you also need to separate them and segment them into different groups and into different audiences. And then go after them one at a time, targeting them separately in order to make sure that your message is specific to their unique pain point, which will help you avoid watering down your message and coming off as bland, boring, and essentially completely ignorable. So to help you narrow things down further in order to start with the absolute best segment of the market possible, you wanna ask yourself this question first. What kind of person would get the absolute most benefit from what it is I have to offer? This doesn't need to be the customer that you end up ultimately focusing on, but it can give you a pretty clear picture of where to start. After all, in business, results are the name of the game and everything else equal if you're able to get a certain segment of the market better results than someone else it only makes sense to focus and concentrate on the area you're going to be able to make the biggest impact now if you don't have any current or potential customers to reach out to you could do just a little role-playing and just pretend that you are your ideal customer in order to try to get in their heads so Adam Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I like hiking, biking, traveling, reading, writing. I'm married, I've got four kids and a dog, and I'm terrified of sharks. Me too. Now for the most part, it's best to be able to ask these questions in person, face to face, but a phone call or a virtual video call can work too. Worst case scenario, you could always send an email to your current or potential clients or customers, or just ask everyone by posting it on social media. Okay, next question. What jobs are your potential customers trying to accomplish, broadly speaking? And you're going to answer this question using something called the jobs to be done framework, which understands that customers buy things for a ton of different reasons, most of which are rarely obvious, and are often made up of three different components, functional, social, and emotional. Let's use a minivan as an example. The functional aspect of it is that it allows you to transport six or seven people easily and relatively comfortably with plenty of storage space. The social aspect here is easy to see as it screams family and safety and community and maybe even a little bit of conformity, especially when compared to say dropping your kids off at school in a neon green monster truck. Then the emotional element is how all of this makes you feel, which is arguably the most important element of all, as purchases are made emotionally first and then rationalized and justified with logic later. In this case, the minivan acts like kind of a stereotypical signal of parenthood and all the emotional triggers that go along with it. Okay, moving on to question three. What are the pains that prevent your audience from accomplishing those jobs? These could be risks associated with them taking action, factors that annoy or frustrate them along the way, or anything else that stops them from getting where they wanna go. Normally, this comes down to something taking too much time, or taking too much money, or taking too much effort. But there could also be missing features or negative social consequences associated with a purchase. Or maybe the risks involved with making a purchase outweigh the perceived benefits they're going to get from taking action. These are important to list out so you can address them directly and provide solutions to each possible objection before your customers have even had a chance to voice them out loud. Next question. What are the gains your audience hopes to achieve from accomplishing those jobs successfully? This question is all about figuring out how your customers' lives will be better off after they do business with you. The best way to find this out is, of course, to ask previous customers how their life is better now than before, but you can also ask current and even potential customers to imagine or visualize or even dare to dream a little about what an ideal outlook might look like in order to get to the root of what they're really after. What you're looking for here are answers to questions like, does your business or offer save them time, money, or energy? Will it make their lives easier, better, more enjoyable? Or maybe it'll help them achieve a goal or fulfill a dream. Bit of a quick side note here, but if you start finding that different people within the same audience have just a ton of different goals or priorities for what they're trying to do or accomplish, it's a pretty good clue that it's time to create a separate audience. Okay, question five. And time to put all of this together into a magical marketing message that makes money right now. 
by answering the question, how does my business's product or service help customers overcome or accomplish their jobs, pains, and gains? And to answer this, all you have to do is look back over the answers to the questions we've just worked through together. Then just connect the dots, match things up. Customer pain or problem over here? Well, here's how your offer solves that. Customer gain, goal, or dream over here? Well, here's how your business helps them achieve that. Job to be done and need to be met waiting up here, whether functional, social, or emotional? Well, here's how your product or service helps them accomplish all of these. You see, once you know what your customer's pains, problems, fears, and frustrations are, or in other words, where they are right now in a current state of suffering, as well as their wants, their goals, their dreams, and their desires, or in other words, where they'd like to get to a more enjoyable and desirable end state or outcome, all you have to do is show how your business can help them bridge that gap from where they are right now to where they wanna go. Now, if you're not sure exactly how to come up with these messages and communicate them in a compelling and effective way, don't worry as I've got a couple things to share with you now that I think are really gonna help you. The first one is a video on the beginner's guide to copywriting that I'm gonna put down in the descriptions below this video. But even better than that, if you'd rather just have ChatGPT create all of this stuff for you, then I'll also link up a video right here that's gonna show you step-by-step -step exactly how I got ChatGPT to build me an entire marketing campaign. So make sure to tap or click that now and I'll see you in there in just a second.